All right, we're coming at you here. Uh, interestingly enough, from Camp Razor, got Matt Martelli, RJ Anderson, Mitch Guthrie, and myself, Jim Beaver. Uh, I'm sure here in a little bit, we're going to get a little music in the background. You boys just shut the band down, I guess. Is that the first time you guys ever shut the band down? Honestly, do it's it. the first time they've listened. <laughs> I've tried shutting the band down before, but it's the first time I've actually listened. So. Uh, always the first out here at Camp Razor. But, uh, yeah, so I know Matt and I, we've been wanting to do this, sit down with a couple of the Team Razor guys for quite a while and just kind of talk about Razor life and everything else. And uh, I think Camp Razor is probably the place to do it. I, I know I've been coming out here. How long has Camp Razor been going, Matt? Four or five years? Yep, yeah, yeah, about five years now, I think. So yeah. I know, RJ, you've been here from the start. How about you, Mitch? Yep, still yeah. going strong. Still going strong. My very first time to Glamis was for Camp Razor. I'd never even been here before. Seriously. I swear, I swear. I, like, I, I feel like you're, you're – you're, Kind of my nice. short course 900. I came out here. I had no idea what these dunes were, no idea where to go. And uh, this has been solid ever since. First camp raised there, I was hooked. And then now I come out here every chance I get. Yeah, this is what we look forward to yeah. now this weekend, yeah. all year. This, this is, is the one. This is honestly the most fun weekend for me. It's it's a little bit of work, but a lot of bit of fun. A little and, bit of work, a lot, the, of, the, it. The, lot that, of it. A lot of bit of fun. A lot of bit. That's glamorous, yeah. though. That's, that's what it's yeah. all about is you come out here and – you know, with your friends and family and just ride, you know, whatever you've got. But, uh, you know, now we've got razors and man, there are literally tens, maybe even, yeah, definitely tens of thousands of razors out here. I just got back from a ride, a little short ride to the hill and man, it, it, it's already turned on. There's already tens of thousands of people here riding. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, yeah this, this place is packed already. And I took my Pro 4 here last year and driving a racer through the dunes, you can't beat it. Like a Pro 4, it's one of the best of the best. Four wheel drive, it will go anywhere. And I have more fun getting my razor and just going. You know, it's just no worries. It's a whole Got lot less work on yeah. it. That's, yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah, it's yeah. cool to see the takeover because yeah. it used to be all buggies out here. And then the 800 came out, you know, 10 years ago now. And then suddenly, you know, in the span of a decade, it's suddenly turned into that you only see razors. Well, that is the much. truth, too, because, I mean, like the buggy industry, I don't want to say it's dead, but it's darn near close. It's, it's like it's on life support right now. Yeah. I mean, there's, what, one or two buggy manufacturers there, still that are making sand cars? There's a handful of them. There's four or five of them, you know, that really do the yeah. premier stuff. And what they've told me, actually, is they're, they're actually selling more buggies, but, you know, the higher end ones. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're still there. That's still part of off-road culture, which is always really cool. Yeah. But, you know, you can't beat the Razor platform for the accessibility, yeah. for how much it's, how affordable it is, you know. I mean, you, we, you guys know what we do. We go out there and beat on these yeah. things, and other than belts, they take it, yep. you know. Well, think, just look at it. Funko, to me, is the biggest, I think they're, they're leading the sand car industry right now. They're making Razor parts. Yeah. They know they fo they're following the trend. But everybody is. I mean, you look at Geyser, you look at yeah, Jimco. I mean, yep. we're talking like yeah. premier trophy truck they builders, know. and they're all of a sudden, in, you know, building razor but parts. You can't, yeah, you can't run from it anymore. If you're those guys, they're big sharks, and they gotta go. They gotta go right in the water. Yeah, yeah. that's well, what you even you even see now, like people that still have buggies and stuff out here riding, and it's like they just they just can't catch on. Like you, you know, a lot of people. It, it took a while to get them to be like, all right, fine. The razors are really cool. They're they don't cost as much as a buggy. They do everything probably better and faster. And uh, there's still those people out here that, you know, they're in a buggy, but they just don't want to grasp onto the point that the razors are actually taking over and they're they're just getting so fast. Yeah, it's because the same guys, like, uh, three or four years ago, were calling them golf carts and, like, oh, you exactly. know, they're making fun of them. But now it's like, oh, I, I want to be one of those guys, but, like, I, I've got too much pride. Yeah. I, I can't no, do it. I laugh. The same – I've gotten made fun of being the golf cart guy for so long, and the same guys that were making fun of me are now asking me for, hey, can I get a discount? Can I yeah. – I'm like – can't just it's not, it's not a wave. You can't just flip like that, man. <laughs> you can't just catch the wave and we're gonna ride have, it in. We're gonna have to jump it's you in. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to spend There's some time. There's a reason with I don't Mitchie. surf. You can't just go out there and catch the biggest wave and ride it right in. Right. No, <laughs> absolutely. Mitchie, what was your first time out here? Uh, man, I actually came out here a long time ago with my dad and rode in like a buggy. Yep. But that was basically it. I, I wasn't driving. That was kind of when I first started trophy carts. And then, like RJ said. My first time really coming out here and actually doing and uh, kind of coming out and driving myself was Camp Razor probably five or six years ago. It's been going on for a while now. And uh, now we're here, and this is one of my favorite places to come, you know. It's it's so fun coming out in a Razor and doing and shredding with your friends, but it's also fun, you know. Glamis is one of those cool places where we all come out and everyone's camping together, and it's just a good time. 
Well, and so. I think that's like, it's truth. I mean, like, it doesn't matter if you're doing short course or desert. I mean, you guys have both done both. Matt's been around the industry for a long time doing a bit of everything, but like there's not many places, even like the mid 400 after the race, like you, you're decompressing after a race and it's like, you want to have some drinks, have a good time, but it's still, it's like, I don't know, there's so much going on. This is like one of the few times or places in this industry where we can all get together and just like, you don't have to worry about anything. You just go out and have fun and you know, you're with your friends. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I say is who else has this? This is Halloween weekend. People have been coming to the dunes for Halloween weekend for years. But this isn't Halloween weekend. Everyone, it, no matter where you're parked, pad five, wh wherever Jacko. you are, this is this is Camp Razor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's really you know, cool. And it's they, they've stamped it. Yeah. They've stamped it, and they've it's been the, the brand. Weekend. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, you know, starting from the, the inception of it was really cool because, you know, they just wanted to reward their customers yeah. and do it in a way that – actually gave them something back gave them a good experience you know you look at the repair line they're, they're repairing cars for free yeah. like that yep. still blows me away i'm like I, I always ask hey so what's the math on that and they shake their head and go <laughs> don't ask that right there is the reason to buy a razor yeah come here buy a razor go out in the dunes hey if you do something stupid like we all do it happens every once in a while we and got crash you. hey pull it right in we'll fix you up yeah who else does that yeah no, no one no one it, it's really cool to see, and it, it just, again, what I really like about the platform, about the whole UTV platform, is it just makes it accessible to everybody. For years growing up in this culture, I would tell people about Glamis, and I would tell people about riding in trophy trucks and all this stuff, and they, they couldn't grasp it. You know, it wasn't something that the average person could come and do, and now with these vehicles, they can, and, and that's what's cool. It's, we ride around out here in and, and our big posse of, of people, and you run into people that are just, you know, they just bought a car and this is their first weekend or they just started doing it and they're learning the dunes and it just, it's really cool. It, so it almost sounds like a sales pitch, but you it, don't, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> yeah. well, that's like, come, we're coming to Camp Razor, but it's not that I have to come here. I don't have to do any of that. Right. It, it, it just goes is, to show, like, there's yeah. so many people here and they've been, we've been doing it for five or six years now and it's like, it's, it's not dying. It's getting bigger and bigger every year and it. It's that's like it's not a sales would, pitch. Like everyone loves coming out and having fun this weekend. Not only would I not miss Camp Razor, but I mean Frankie Ballard's coming. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not G Easy, it's right? It's not quite it's not G Easy, but yeah. Frankie Ballard's coming. Yeah, we and we just got him to shut off his music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You guys said something earlier, though. You know, you were talking about razors, and you know, I think you know, talking about coming up and first experiences and stuff like that. I think one thing that. Like, I know me, I, you know, I don't want to say I'm a late adopter of the UTV industry, but it just wasn't there when I was a kid growing up. I mean, it was like I learned to ride a, then, you know, the desert. It was on a dirt bike and a quad. My first experience behind four wheels. Don't was forget in, about three wheelers, man. Yeah, Remember three wheelers. those things. But, hey, you know, Marty first, Hart's got something on you guys. <laughs> yeah. I think I was 12 in San Felipe, and my dad put me behind the wheel of his pre-runner, 79, you know, strap belt pre-runner. And, you know, I'm bombing through the whoops of San Felipe at 12, and, you know, darn near rolled the truck and but that wasn't the way to learn how to you know i've been riding with my dad for years but that's not the way to learn you know now these kids you know you look at like a kid like seth quintero you know coming up and your brother ronnie was the same way like they have access to so many well you i mean mod carts yeah, trophy carts I everything didn't, now i didn't have an option like i was going through huge whoops when i was three years old you know yeah yeah i mean it's rad to see that new generation i mean you guys are the forefront of it where you know you guys have been driving since you've been children right yeah. And so by the time, like, you're in your 20s, you've already had more seat time than most of the guys you're competing against. So, you know, we've seen that paradigm shift in short course racing and, and, and starting to happen in desert racing as well, where it's, you know, younger and younger people being better and better because they started at an earlier age. And, you know, I, I think that that's it's a healthy thing, especially for driving, even driving on the streets. Like, you know, my brother's... Uh, my brother's daughter, my niece, is she's on car number two, right? Yeah. Yeah, and she's 11. Yeah, it's, that's a, speaking of sales pitch earlier, is I've, it sounds like a sales pitch, but I literally grew up driving a Razor. With the very first Razor I drove, it was I was not getting paid for it. I was not doing anything. Yeah. I was just having fun. I learned yeah. to drive in the desert. I learned all this. So all this experience I have, I just won a Pro 4 championship, and it's That's crazy it to started. say. It's crazy to say, but I did. I started driving a razor. Like you don't go. Where else do you go? And That's can That's drive? what I was gonna say. Is yeah. I started in the trophy carts, and then so you have to end those when you're 16. I was like mm -hmm. turning 15. It's like, what are we gonna do? Like, should we do like a super buggy? Should we do this? Should we do that? And 
finally caught on to the work series after talking to RJ and just bought like a that at that time it was like a Razor 900 and went out and started winning some races and then eventually moved up and did some Lucas Oil stuff all that and eventually got sponsored by Polaris but like that's where it all started and that's what's so cool is like you were saying it's so accessible because you know anyone could go in buy a Razor and I mean if you have the talent you could go win races and eventually you know make it into a career if you want or something like that yeah, yeah five, can't buy five, a trophy five truck. years ago <laughs> me and mitch guthrie jr were no one you know you know you what know? i love about you guys is your modesty <laughs> like you just came back you just won, won a pro four oh. championship all right yeah, and if there was nobody in that class except for rob mccachran that's still you beat rob close McCachran, to a miracle right, right? Yeah. that's incredible right yeah. and you just had a really big win the end of last year right so and and you're racing the ball 1000 with reese millen you know what I mean? So it's like that that learning curve now is compressed because of the of how early you guys are starting. It's it's really cool to watch it. Yeah, you know? it's it's crazy. Uh, the guys before us, like Rob and all them, and I'm I was I wasn't even born yet. But it's crazy because like the trophy cart thing started like when me and RJ were racing, and suddenly there's all these young dudes that are you know 16 even just coming out of the trophy cart, hitting a pro light and winning races. And it was kind of weird, and it's 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 cool to think like, oh man, these razors, trophy carts, have given us such an opportunity to start racing when we we're so young. Because before, I don't really know what they did. Like yeah. I don't know what Rob Mack was able to do when he was, you we're know, on sixteen. Dirt bikes and three wheelers and yeah. it, it up. sounds like a sales pitch. It Let, sounds like a sales pitch, but it's not. <laughs> so the Rob Mack story is really funny because it, it, you're right. Like usually, they're not hitting their stride in racing till they're thirty. You know yep. what I mean? Um, or getting those opportunities because, you know, it's usually a, a paid ride or, or what have you. But, you know, Rob, Rob got pulled out of the crowd by RJ's dad, you know, to, to race a buggy, right, for Walker. Yeah, I'm in a lucky scenario for sure. Like, <laughs> Rob Mack used to live with my dad. He was yeah. my dad's roommate. He lived <laughs> with my dad. Right. right. See, and I didn't know that, so oh, this yeah. is new. Oh, I didn't know they were roommates. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rob Mack lived with my dad. He drove for Walker Evans and then lived with my dad. But even even so, like, I would have never had the same chance. Like, back then, all of the factory support is way different than what we have now. Yeah. Now we have UTV industry is what's driving factory support. There's That's what's driving there's off-roading. No, there's no hey. Ford, Chevy any, that, that are pushing hard yeah you know? it opens up a lot of opportunities uh, for people well in polaris that's that's one thing i want to talk about there though is like it's not like you know they just go after name guys right i mean there's kids that started out in a utv no factors brandon sims is one you know what i mean and yeah. you know um he started out they didn't know who the hell he was he yeah. went out he was quick they go hey they got he took they took notice now all of a sudden he's a factory driver i mean you came up through the ranks wasn't like you started your dad had won some hammer stuff but you came yeah. up through the ranks and yeah. slowly the support started coming in even even the trophy card stuff i mean you're racing that forever we got a ton of wins but it's it's hard to get sponsors like yeah. there's there's not much you could do so you know i got on the utvs and for a little bit you gotta do it yourself and thank god i have my parents and they're the ones that made me you know be able to start what i'm doing and have a career but Eventually, thankfully, I was able to, you know, win some races and Polaris took on and finally got a lot of support. And now it's my career. So it's, it's really cool to see. And uh, I'm thankful for them to, you know, be able to do what I do and come out here and do this stuff and just have fun. The, the writing's on the wall. You can go to a dealership. You can finance a razor. And if you win races, they're going to catch on. They're going to catch on. There's yeah. no one out there that's winning races that's just like paying for it themselves, you know? Yeah. And there's no other sport that I don't think that you can do this. There's a you, lot of people watching, too. It's not even just Polaris. It's, no. you know, to, so many other random sponsors out there that are watching, and they're they're noticing people that are running up front and racing yeah, and a, sponsoring everyone. those people. Yeah. I've had people ask me that. You know, they're like, why are you racing a UTV? And I'm like, well, there's sponsorship there. And they're like, well, how is that? You've got a trophy truck parked in the garage, <laughs> and you're not racing. You're racing a UTV. And I'm like, there's more money in the UTV industry. And they're like, how does that work? And I'm like, You've got 20 tire companies instead of three. You've got 20 wheel companies instead of three or four. I'm like, you know, I'm like, there's yeah. just more because yeah. it's such a big industry. Yeah, look at look at players. I mean, they're the they're the dominant name of off road. If you do anything off road, they're most likely tied to whatever you do. Absolutely. Whether, whether it be four wheel parts, Polaris Razor, whatever, they're tied to something. They have their ties and their roots are in off road. That's what they've done. No, you know? it's 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 really interesting. I mean, like watching the cultural shift too. Like, I was you know pre-running for the Bottle One Thousand is about to start. And I've been talking to a lot of teams, and a lot of them are, are they're going to pre-run in razors, yeah. you know, because like 
you know, it's twenty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars to prep a pre runner for that for yeah. pre running. So you could buy two cars <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and go pre run. Yeah. I and I mean yeah. they're they're not like the same thing. Like obviously the pre runners go way faster, but the Polar the razors are getting up there. I mean to where you could go pre run in one of those and you're going pretty damn fast. Yeah. 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 And that's just your pre runner. Yeah. yeah. And I I just obviously coming from short course background. Um, the cops racing team yep. came me up and they're like, "Hey, we want help going faster." The band is ripping right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Those of you that didn't think we're recording this live yeah. out of Camp Razor, we got the band going in the background. They just. We if you guys, make, if you haven't kids. heard Frankie Ballard before, here you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. Here, here's a teaser. <laughs> yeah, YouTube's probably gonna flag this thing. You're not allowed the video to go live because we're using some pirated music. I'll tell you or what, the right? guitars work. The right. guitars work. <laughs> but uh, absolutely. No, and it's really cool to see, you know, a company like Polaris give back. Because yeah. there's a lot of company, you, you know, this is a, this is capitalism, right? It, nobody's required to give back, but they definitely are giving back. They're spending a lot of money here, you know, to make sure that people come out this weekend, have a good time in their razors, you yep. know, get taken care of. Go see all the displays here at Camp Razor, all the different companies that support them. You know, as well as, you know, bands, two nights. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's it's cool. That's, That's what, it's, it's easy to sell. Like, everyone, like, talks to me about, like, what what should I buy? And I'm like, a razor. I don't have to sell it, but come to Camp Razor. Frankie Ballard's coming. <laughs> They're going to fix whatever happens. Like, who else does that? Right. Their support is second to none. They're giving back to the desert yeah. community. Yeah, Polaris isn't selling anything here. No, it's not like they've got a dealership no. full they're of. They're losing money. Yeah, on they, all this. They, they're, they're not selling. They're giving back it's to the consumers. Free, it's a yeah. free concert. That's what I hate. Sometimes I hate seeing you know in comments and stuff. People are like, oh, Frankie Ballard's like they'll get mad at like certain things. It's like you guys should be should be happy that Polaris is putting not only putting his whole thing on, doing a free concert, fixing your car for free. Like they they have it all here, and yeah. it's There's, and like you said, it's it's not like we're trying to sell yeah. you something. Like it's just. Polaris there's, is awesome. They're, they're doing it. There's 365 days in a year, and how many concerts go on at Glamis? Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This yeah. is it. <laughs> I don't know. You, you probably played the air guitar out here a few times around the yeah, campfire. Yeah, I've done so. on one leg. I do my, I do my part, but. <laughs> we might have had a concert last night. Yeah. But Frankie, for sure. I think, is a better singer. Yeah. For, for I, sure I, there was a concert last night. I'm going to get some tips. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to circle back to the racing thing real quick, because I think this has been kind of understated. And I think Mitchie could be the next version of it. But so we've had an, a Razor kid, which is RJ, come all the way up through the ranks. He run, he won the biggest premier championship in short course pro four, right? And yeah. he's a Razor kid. Then you got a guy like Mitchie. He's come up on the desert side of things all the way through the ranks as a Razor kid. He's winning everything you can in the desert. Makes me wonder when we're gonna have somebody like Mitch, the doors are gonna open, step up into trophy truck and be the first guy to legit take a championship coming up through the Razor ranks in trophy truck. You know, I think. It we it's an had, open door, guys. We, we Anybody. have Johnny. Who, Anybody. Who, we love Johnny yeah. to death, but Johnny's money bags, Johnny. And, uh, you know, he started in UTVs, and he just won overall at Vegas Torino, which I think was a big deal That's for a, a guy that got deal. his start in Razors. That's a big that, – uh, look, let, let's give Johnny some credit. I yeah, mean, I love Johnny to death. He, so he, he's, he, he, yeah, did. he won the longest off-road race in America. Yeah, yeah. and, I mean, Jesse, Jesse Jones was driving with him. That's a big help for sure, but he had to drive the wheels off that car, you know. So um, I, you, we have to give him credit for being the first, you know, of the UTV guys. But yeah, like I agree. I think for me personally, it's it's fun watching it because I see how you guys developed and how capable the vehicles are. And I, and truthfully, we talk about it all the time. Like, God, I can't wait to get you guys in a trophy truck and to show everybody. Like, okay. On this platform, this is what they can do, right? Yeah. Well, I happen to know a guy with a trophy truck sitting in a garage <laughs> collecting dust right now, Matt. Right? So if you ever want to let somebody like Mitchie behind the wheel just to test, I mean, I'm Hello? sure we could figure something I'm out. right here. Yeah. Uh, wait a second. No, let me let. It's hey, your truck. Can we get this on record right now that I could drive that thing? This is or? fully recorded. Right? Yeah. Evan and Mendoza, but, I know you guys are listening. Yeah, right? Right. You're, you're going to, uh, if Mitchie wads it up, are we going to offset the, the one, cost? Here? One cool thing, though, is like, yeah, I, I want to get in trophy. That's the dream. I've always yeah, want right? to drive one of those things but the the other cool thing is the razors are are fast. getting so fast it's crazy. Fast. and and it's crazy those guys that run up front usually there's like a top five or top ten group and 
no matter what brand, this whole sport is just, it's getting insane. And oh, yeah. All those guys in the desert and the short course, everything, it's a battle. Yeah. And those guys are sending it. The cars are bulletproof now. Like, you, you got to you gotta go as fast as you can all the race and hope you win that thing because there's so many other good competitors out there. Yeah, that's what, that was crazy staying there is, is some people look at me as like a truck guy. Oh, he raced the short course, but... Either way, that's, this is where I started. Yeah, I got all my experience through driving a racer. And you still do there's, it. There's I mean, no, you pop yeah. up at works races here oh, yeah. and there, oh, yeah. and you've done Terracross recently. It's fun. That's what I like doing. Yeah, you know, that's what I like doing. But so when people call me and they're like, "Hey, will you come drive my 6100? Will you come help me?" The cops racing team just had me Tuesday. I, I went to Glen Helen and helped them qualify their trophy truck or learn to help them Set teach it them. Up. Yeah, yep. yep. And it's like you just called a UTV guy. <laughs> to come help set up your trophy truck. Damn like, golf cart that's, kids. That's, that's that's the roots. I mean, there's no totally. there's no hiding it, you know? Totally. And, uh, yes, I've had a lot of experience in trucks now, and, and uh, but this, this is where it starts. There's no way, I don't care who you are, you don't just go into the trophy truck ranks, set the world on fire, and get sponsorships. No. You don't. No. But you could go to, you can go buy a UTV, build it, Go do good, and you're gonna get sponsors. Yeah, you're definitely gonna get support. And it, and again, it's cool to see. You know, again, the one of the big things I'm excited about in the future is all this racing that's starting to happen in the Midwest. You know, the South, the East Coast. Yeah, we're, and other countries. Yeah. I mean, China. I got to go to China this China. year, and it was cool, man. It was like you roll up to the dunes. They've got UTVs and you know all their homemade vehicles, and they're you know it's. Just like this, yeah. you know, but their version of it. So it, exactly. it Everyone, was really cool. They all have their different like versions of the, it's crazy, like when we went to China, it's, it's a whole other world there. And uh, like they're, they're a little behind on the Razor stuff, you know, since we're doing this every day, but it's cool to see all the different people oh. and, and Polaris is everywhere. Like we went to, all the way to China and we're doing China, doing in China. So uh, it was cool to see. And it's, it's crazy. It's worldwide now because at first when these things came out, it's like, oh, cool. Like. Everyone, like the the way I put it is, uh, I used to like tell my friends like, oh yeah, I raced these razors, whatever. And they're like, oh, what are those dune buggies or something? And now everyone knows what a razor is. They've seen them. Yeah. Even even more, you know, random people that have never seen off road, they've seen a razor at some point. So it's cool to see, you know, in the last decade, they go from like no one really knowing what they are to everybody knows what this thing is. Yeah. It's the standard. It's, it's funny too. Like, I mean, I I go to a lot of stuff outside of off road and. It was really kind of interesting this year at the Indy 500. I've got to know most of the IndyCar drivers. And I'm there, and it used to be like, they'd be like, oh, you race the trophy truck. Now they don't want to talk about that. I walk up and they're like, hey, I just bought a new Razor. What long travel should I get for it? You know, it's like the whole trophy truck thing's out. It's like, we want to talk UTVs. We don't even want to talk about the Indy 500, the biggest freaking yeah. race on yeah. the planet. Yeah. They want to talk about their new Razor. And to me, that's like, you've got these guys and they're not getting free units from Polaris. Oh, they're, they're going they're to buying. They're going they're to a buying. dealership buying it because they want to be a part of the they're course. They're accessible. Hey, just think about it. What was more fun to you? Going and sitting at the Indy 400 or Indy 500 or driving a Razor? Yeah. You yeah. know, it's it's way well, more fun. Just I could be at there. NHRA in Vegas right yeah. now at the yeah. four wide. Actually, I'm how, Razor, how much so. longer are we going to be here? Because I need yeah. to go Dune pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we found some huge whoops. And exactly. I mean, that that's what makes this this weekend so fun is, you know, it's not a trade show that we have to come sit around and, yep. and just talk to people or do whatever. It's it's we actually get to ride and have fun and go on the night rides and, you know, barbecue with our buddies and. You know, the whole nine yards. That's, That's what, what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel super fortunate growing up in this culture. I've been coming out here since I was 12. And it's, you know, for me, it's gotten better because now the vehicles, everybody can come have fun. I, yeah. You know, growing up, it was like you you had your, your bike guys and your ATV guys and and uh, your, your uh, sand dude car guys. And, you know, it's like. Not everybody could get out in the dunes. A lot of people had to go just go ride in the back with somebody and just go to the hill and watch. Yeah. You know, they couldn't really get out in the dunes. But, you know, we just took a whole bunch of uh, newbies out on a ride. Never been in the dunes, right? Put them in razors, had them follow us through the baby dunes into the over to uh, Oldsmobile Hill. Mind blown. These guys are like, OK, we'll buy one. I'm like. I I'm not selling you <laughs> one. Yeah, I'm that's just what I was sharing the say. experience with you. You know, this yeah. this group. The the cool thing about this is, 
this off-road community is so awesome, whether it be Polaris or the people that are driving them. Uh, it's such an awesome group of people, and, you know, like, that's where I met all my best friends and uh, through racing, and it's cool to see, you know, anyone, you break an A-arm, whatever it is, everyone's in there jumping in to help, and uh, it's a really good community, and everyone out here is, you know, supporting each other and helping each other yeah. out and just wants to have a good time. For sure, like Minji's saying, I'll leave it for here. I grew up racing uh, go-karts. That's where I started my very first time, and it wasn't that fun to me. I grew up, in, and then I started racing off-road, and it was like, you literally hang out with the guy that you're racing against, the guy that beat you, the guy that you're trying to beat. You go hang out. You and you're even helping each other. I was, like, I was, oh, I was here's 15, how you can so go we're, faster. We're like, like, do this. Jumpies and stuff back then, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're gonna give you like if you go to asphalt racing, you go, hey, can I have a tire gauge? They'll be like, oh no, no. you can't. Go away. You go to off road. Anyone's there to help you. Right. It's a, it's a family. Off road, it's a family. And players is king of off road right now. They, to me, in my opinion. They own off road, and they're they're giving back Camp Razor. Who else does anything like this? And uh, I'm just super lucky to be a part of it. I think this is the the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Tbh. <laughs> I, I'm in there with you. You know, I'm in there with you because, you know, it's again, it's this thing where it it's accessible, and whether you buy a car or whether you go ride in one, it doesn't matter. Just yep. come out and do it. You know, for yourself, have yeah. fun. It doesn't really matter what vehicle you buy. It's uh, just getting out and yeah. doing it with your friends and your family, and you know there, there's nothing like it. Right? You can. We even have people out here that didn't bring a razor, and they're yeah. just hanging out and they're just having a good time, staying in their trailer, just hanging out with us. Yeah. Like that's you could be what it's the, all about. You can be in the middle of the dunes, and not only us, but anyone out here in this whole pad will stop and help you get your your car fixed. Totally. They're gonna yeah, get I you did back. That yeah, yeah. They're gonna get you back. <laughs> Oh, what was that? <laughs> uh, yeah, he might have helped me. Me and my brother uh, got a little bit aggressive with each other. But when you get racers in the dunes, yeah. these things happen. Yeah. Yeah. Especially <laughs> when they're brothers and it's like. Yeah. Slight, slight battle. We're slight here, battle in the dunes. We're here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> day one. Day one. That's no. the problem. You got to get through day one to get to day two, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, but we didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we're brothers. The, uh, and, and, and these guys, like, you guys are, it's like full throttle everything. Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. tough. I mean, once we get out there, we're all like, oh, we'll cruise to the hill. But, I mean, once you get out there in the dunes and so I see fun. RJ, like, pull up next to me, I'm like, man, I have to door this guy yeah. now. <laughs> hey, my line is, what do you need brakes for when you're always on the gas? There you go. <laughs> TBH. TBH, what do you need brakes for if you're always on the gas? <laughs> <laughs> Been racing at Crandon too much now. Yeah. <laughs> Besides this weekend, you know, just racing and stuff, what's been your favorite experience all year related to UTVs? TBH, to be honest, this is my favorite weekend. Yeah. Well, besides this one, what yeah. else? It's, it's, I don't get to do enough of the fun stuff. So when I go get my razor, it like, looks like work, but that's what I do for fun. Right. It's like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, it's easy. Like, I keep, everyone thinks like, oh, you're selling me a razor, you're trying to do this. That's literally what I do for fun. If I was not sponsored by Razor, I would still get on my Razor, and for fun, I would go hit up my friends, Mitchy. That's how I met him. It's oh, you guys are friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I know this guy for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, unfortunately. You guys claim each other once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, well, apparently, uh, we're both friends. And well, I was, I was hanging out uh, with Sarah Price the other day, and she was mentioning you you guys live in the same neighborhood and pretty much ride all the time, you know, in that neighborhood. So. That's a part of it as well. Like, Yeah, it dictated my life. Where I bought my house, I wanted to be able to ride. I, I open my garage, I leave my house, and I go out in the hills. I can go skydive. I can literally go to Paris Airport. Dri I've driven my Razor before, went to the airport, skydove, drove my Razor back home, call it a day. Yeah, that's like, I, what, what? and I can't do that like where I'm at. And I go to RJ's, and we yeah. wake up you know, in the morning, and it's like, all right, let's go take the razors yeah. out today and go have yeah. some fun. And it's like, yeah. just drive that thing out your garage and go have some fun yeah. all day. And you're good to go. Like, you know, bring a cooler and, and your friends yeah. and have some fun. People ask me that all the time. They're like, why do you live in Parker? I'm like, because I take my razor out of my garage. Case in point, last Saturday, took my <laughs> razor out of the garage, took it out in the desert. We did a 100-mile loop. We ended up at the desert bar. We had some fun at the desert bar. 
we get in the razors, we drive to the river, we jump in the river, swim for like an hour, and then I drive back home and pull in the garage. How do you, so beat, like, how do you beat that? How do you beat rough that? Yeah, day. how do you beat yeah, that? I can't, I can't do yeah. that in Oceanside. That would be like a felony for <laughs> sure. <laughs> they, they, I pull out of my garage, I'd be arrested. Yeah, just shot. get it on video. If right? you started that thing, you'd be arrested. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah, exactly. And then, oh, you're on the beach. Yeah, uh, you're definitely yeah, going to prison. Done. Yeah. Well, that's that's why we go to Baja. You know, yeah. we spend so much sure. time doing rides down there. It's like, where else can you be six cars wide down the beach? Even like you have a, you're like starting a business from, you know, it's it's driving Polaris Razors in Baja. Uh, it, totally. Yeah. I mean, it's like the, they take you to your destination. You go have some fun. You bring your friends. It's it's just. That's what makes it happen right that, there. That's exactly what we did because, you know, you, you remember it was the father and son trip we did with Polaris. And, you know, it was the first time I really stopped and looked around at stuff because we were on that trip with, you know, your dad and, and Bryce and his dad and Chad and his dad. And, man, how how fun no, was no, that? That I was crazy. I can't put it in words. You know? That was like one of my first times. I knew, I knew nothing about Baja. Yeah. And the, the freedom that they give you down there. Yeah. Is that's you can't even put it into words how 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 it feels. You could go drive down the ocean. What blew me away was, you know, being there with Larry Raglan and, and him not knowing some of that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I didn't know it, but we, we drove down that dirt road and figured it out. And, you know, that's I think the bigger the bigger thing with these vehicles is that that exploring and that adventure. Yeah. And there are a ton of trails in America. There's a ton of trails, uh, you know, all over the world, and it just it opens that all up. Yeah, you know? I mean, think we're there for a purpose. We had a father-son ride going on, but yep. beside the purpose, we were there with the baddest dudes in off-road. Larry, yeah. Chad, Raglan, yep. Bryce Menzies. He's the baddest dude right now Bruce. in the desert. Yep. Bruce. Sorry, right. Bruce. Bruce. Bruce Menzies. <laughs> that's, a, that's what's cool. That's and right like, I, I, his I love this place. It comes out at night. Yeah. This place is awesome. <laughs> But uh, one of the best places you take a razor is going to Baja, man. That's oh. like I totally look for it. You know, even the race, like the thousand, that's all fun. But man, the pre-running is so fun when you can just go out all day, stop at a taco shop, have some lunch, yeah. and you know, just keep going and end up at your hotel. And then that's, I mean, that's what you do for a few Think days of straight. Larry Raglan. I mean, yeah, his name speaks for himself. He's the goat. He gets in a razor and is having fun with us. Yeah, he's he's actually yes, right now exactly. in Baja yeah. on a razor ride. Yeah. I'm not kidding uh, you. No, it, it's funny. We just did it with the Legends Rally. We took about 40 people, 460 miles, three days of riding, and um, you know, one of the couples was in their 70s from Wyoming. They had never seen the ocean, right? <laughs> like seriously, we're coming around the bend and the Tijuana. Get cultured, guys. The is Tijuana. This is what water looks like. They were, they were like, oh my god. I'm like, that's nothing. Wait Holy till we get shoot. down in the beautiful stuff. So, yeah. You know, and then there was a another a husband and wife and their kids, and the the wife had never driven a razor, right? And she did 460 miles, and she did fine, man. You know just shows you how easy these things are to drive yeah for sure that's on my bucket list a legends rally i gotta do it one day you guys go to it's like it's like a five-star resort but for off-road yeah you know well it's back to that trip we took yeah. it just i had so much fun i was like we need to be doing this yeah. right the, with these vehicles now everybody can do it yeah. whereas even you know i'll tell you like last year one of the best experiences i've had in baja in years was uh, pre-running the ball 1000 last year and we did 350 miles a day and we did the whole run in three days and we were hustling and we had a flat and we had a belt that was it yeah. you know and i had such a blast and what i reflected on is the fact that i've done that before but i've done it in pre-runners yeah. you know trophy trucks like crews massive you know m you know yeah. groups of people and we broke all kinds of stuff yeah and so it was you know days of fixing and all that yeah. stuff it wasn't you know right, the right. the pure driving pleasure that we got on this last one and man it was it was special and yeah it, you know and we want to share that with people and yeah. now these vehicles allow us to do that and, and it's like that. like you said it's like oh you might like what goes wrong you might have a flat you might blow a belt like those are the two things, and you change that in five minutes, and, and you're back going again. And you don't have to change a transmission or something in a giant truck. And guess yeah. what? The guy behind you is in a razor, and he has your parts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't yeah. have that. And he's going to help else. you. Yes, yeah. he's going to help you. Right. And that's, like, what's funny to me is going back to the cops thing where I was helping those guys is um, coming and helping a trophy truck team. They're like, hey, do you have a pre -runner? And I'm like, well, I have a razor. They're like, oh, it's perfect. You know, like, you're in Baja, you're going through that's huge a whoops. Yeah. Yeah. And... 
that's in a racer it's like okay there's a speed difference obviously it, it goes as fast as it'll go it, but it's not a trophy truck a trophy yeah. truck is the baddest thing in the desert absolutely you know yeah. absolutely and there's there's a reason that a razor is twenty five thousand dollars and a trophy truck's two hundred two million dollars right you know depending it, yeah. Yeah, if, you're could, yeah, if you're bruce if you're bruce bruce has a two million dollar it's just but think think of the fun per dollar Sure. That's you know? that's what it's all about. Uh, you yeah, said it right there. It's fun per dollar, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. The way they keep ramping up, yes. like with this Turbo S, like oh, the God. price didn't jump too much, but the yeah. performance sure did. Fun per dollar. <laughs> it's getting a little out of control. That, yeah. that car blew me away. Like, you know, I, I was able to use one to try one for our Legends Rally uh, earlier this year, and so I did 300 and something miles in it. And uh, there were points where I was looking down, and I'm like, I need to slow down, you know. For sure. And, and that, that was the first. That's the first UTV that I've I've ever felt that way, you know. And, and they just they built it so, you know. I mean, what are you gonna modify? You're gonna do cage. Exactly. Seats. That's what I was gonna say. Is Custom. like You're my car. It too. Yeah, my car I brought out. Usually it's like, all right, let's put some arms on it. Let's get it all strengthened up. I brought. I have a brand new Turbo S. It has like 20 miles on it now, and it's just like, you know, throw a cage on some seats. I put speakers in it so you know where the party's at thanks to SSV works. <laughs> right, party's and, always at our And place. like an ice chest and you're good to go. It's yeah. not like you have to do up the whole car. It's like out of the box, you could go hit hit the hill I, and beat anyone up it well, and not I bottom out up those gigantic I'm so glad you did that because oftentimes I'm in the dunes. I'm lost. I'm like, where is the party at? Oh, <laughs> our I place. got you. Hey. Just come to our place. And then Just I can come, hear the thumping. Come find us. us. And that we're safe. We're I'm safe. pretty sure I could hear it from here right now. <laughs> it's funny, though. You mentioned that in the aftermarket. Look at the Turbo S. Try and find an aftermarket set of axles or arms for that. There's only one or two companies. You know, Nobody's jumped on board because you don't, you don't have to change anything. You don't even need it. Yeah. No. No. yeah That's know. what's cool. And, and like the, the four-seater they just came out with, I just I just got one at my house. And it's it's sick. It comes with full doors. It comes with the, the click-safe harnesses, uh, like a roof. And it's like you could literally just go take this thing, like Baja, right? whatever you need, and go pre-run. Like yeah. you're dialed. Yeah, it's they're it really has a Sparco steering wheel. Yeah. Yep. Ride command, yeah. like it's yeah. got it all. D U N done. Like yeah. I said, T V H, it's ready. Like <laughs> I said, D U N done. Exactly. No, I just just rode a four seater for the first times in the dunes here, and it was so much fun. Like I can't wait. I'm like I cannot wait to get that thing. You know, Baja or someplace else, and really open it up and go. You know, why are we why are we wasting our time? Let's just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we got to do stuff yeah. and then we got to talk about it. Uh, you know, and then we got to do stuff and Frankie, talk about Frankie it. Frankie wants to go too. Oh, uh, he he definitely needs a ride. <laughs> All right, I don't know. I mean, shoot, this has been some pretty solid conversation. I'm kind of agreeing with these guys, though. It might be time to get back out in the desert and or the dunes here and have a little. I'm call. for that. Let's do it. Mic drop. But, uh, you guys like to shred? Let's go shred. All right. Let's go well, thanks, uh, the RJ, Mitchy, Matt. Uh, been fun, and uh, yeah, thanks to all you guys for tuning in. Thanks, guys. guys. It's been Thank fun. You.